All right, well, the players are ready in the feature match area, so let's head on down and watch Gabriel Balanic on Azorius Lotus versus Bo Matt Como on Green Red Devotion. Bo Matt's one of our good friends from Roanoke, Virginia, often uh, a cohort of mine in some of my endeavors, and uh, we're glad to see him come up to play this weekend. Starts off with a turn one, Lionel Rell is exactly where you want to, where you want to be playing Green Devotion. I do see a Fable. Yeah. Turn two Fable. Carplusion 4 is going to enable the turn two Fable. We could not do that and instead go Elf and maybe something else. Ooh, okay, looks like we're actually old. going for Old Growth Troll instead for pressure. Yeah, pressure and getting some Devotion online if he finds a Nykthos. Land number two from Blonic is Hall the Storm Giants. No Proctor. That's a big deal for Matt. Advantage Matt early because that's not there. Not a ton of early interaction from the Azorius Lotus Field deck. This isn't a traditional control deck in that sense. That said, I do see three copies of Jawari Disruption. That can be good on this turn. All right, Matt's going to float some mana with Nykthos, 3-4, and then we're going to use red to play Fable, and I believe we have one or two floating. Two, should be two green floating. You better use them big dice, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then Elf with floating mana. And we're going to attack for four. Okay. What you got, Balonic? In a turn. Balonic could have had a Lagoon Breach there. There's two copies of Hornlock Whale slash Lagoon Breach in the deck, but no interaction. Just, uh, is that a joint exploration? It is a joint exploration. What uh, green lands does he have to splash? Maybe uh, Triom or something? Uh, three Spires Headquarters, okay. along with the Lotus Fields. So, sure. yeah. can. But most of the time, just playing it as an instant speed preordain has decided to split his copies of Impulse. Has two Impulse and two Exploration right. instead of four, which would be more typical. All right, here comes Lotus Field, and we're going to discontinuity with the trigger on the stacks. So that's going to give us a big ramp. But now we go back Como's way. We have Chapter 2 of Fable, a big turn incoming perhaps with Storm the Festival. Let's see what he hits. Yeah, pitched a forest there, drew another elf. Can play that one essentially for free before activating Nykthos. Wants to get his attack in first, get a treasure. That makes sense. Wow, Balonic already down to 10. Old Grove Troll ain't no joke on the play, man. Matt well, goes ahead and plays another Elf, and then we're going to nick those for 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's Storm the Festival. Top of the deck reveals Kiora and Old Growth Troll. That's good enough. And even if something like Supreme Verdict comes down next turn, those trolls do go on to the forest, and we can maybe generate a bunch of extra bodies that away. But we're going to draw a card off the Kiora. Well, the awkward part for Matt is that he only has the one forest. So if there's a sweeper here like Supreme Verdict, both old growth trolls will come back as an aura on one, the one forest. You can only have, make one 4-4. Four, four. Looks like we found something to do. Yeah, it's from the graveyard. Here it comes. Storm the Festival, yeah. number two. Added exactly four devotion to the battlefield, so it has ten there. Yeah, that treasure helping him out there, so he's able to just hit ten mana on the flashback. <sighs> Not the best. We really wanted, like, multiple big things to draw cards off of Kiora or Karn the Great Creator. We do have Oath of Nyssa and a land, so we are ramping up a little bit and perhaps finding something else to do next turn, even in the face of a big sweeper like Farewell. Okay. Finds another troll off the Oath, and yeah, this is lethal damage that Blanc is facing. Needs some sort of sweeper. All right, let's take see, a peek uh, at the hand. see two, ver two Supreme Verdict, three Farewell in the main deck, so... It's going to be looking for one of those. Farewell would be excellent because that's going to deal with the Fable. It's going to make sure no trolls come back from the old growth trolls, deal with the Kiora, just everything. All right, let's see if Balonic has one of those big sweepers. He's thumbing his lands right now to figure out which one to play. He has Plains, Castle Vantress, Hallowed Fountain. I can't quite see the spells that are hiding in the right part of his hand. But we have only cast Joint Exploration and Discontinuity, so we should have a lot of potential plays. We're going to start here by tapping two. If this is Cycle, I think this is Cycle Shark Typhoon looking for Supreme Verdict. Wow. Big sign of weakness here. Doesn't find it. Packs it in. Balonic <laughs> down a game. Matt Como picks him up. Yeah, that's one of the issues with this Azorius Lotus Field deck. Not a lot of early interaction. If you don't have the sweeper, you can get run over very quickly. Yeah. You know, we saw Dingo when we were here last month. Young Dingo got run over a lot by some aggro decks. Managed to fell some of them in the top eight, but... Uh, they were definitely tricky matchups, and you know, Matt sort of took the role of an aggressive deck in that in the, with his draw with those old growth trolls and the the fast nick those mana. All right. Well, as these players reach to their sideboard to look for some help, I'm going to reach over to the other side of the desk and ask Ross, "Hey, what's your expert opinion on how Balonic should sideboard in this matchup? Blue White Lotus versus Bo Matt's Green Red Devotion." 
Okay, so in Bolonic's sideboard, I see four copies of Dovin's Veto, two Aethergust, two Lantern of the Lost, two Mystical Dispute, two Narset's Perversal, two Dragonlord Dramoka, and one Thought Distortion. Uh, I like the Dovin's Vetoes, and I like the Aethergust. Okay. You know, just to have some early interaction, especially against this version of Devotion, where they ha some of their mid-range threats are non-creatures mm -hmm. in Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So Dovin's Veto hits them as well, uh, you know, even uh, if you're on turn two. Um... Then, uh, then yeah, the Aether Gusts are obviously great. I don't really like anything else. Sometimes people like Mystical Dispute matchups like this, um, but three mana mana leak I don't think is good enough. So uh, I think it'll just be the the six true counter spells coming in. Well, on the other side of things, I know that Bowmat's playing another Karn deck like he was in Modern earlier with that Mono Black Coffers deck, but this Mono Green Devotion deck rarely has things that it actively wants to side in in any given matchup, but is there anything in there that stands out as something that might want to come in? Maybe a red card off the red splash that could be good in the matchup? Bowmat does have a couple red cards in the sideboard, but none good in this matchup. Has two copies of Rending Volley as a non-Karn target. Well, if you're uh, afraid of Strike Proctor, that one might be okay. Yeah, yeah, potentially here. You're right. Uh, also has a Twin Shot Sniper that is a red card and mm -hmm. also a Karn target. That one does not deal with Proctor. It does so. not only deals two damage, and yeah. it's an ETB. Uh, yeah, so uh, Running Volley, I, th I I can see coming in, because Proctor is definitely a problem. Uh, there's not really cards that you want to bring out now, with the Fables taking up more of the flex spots. But, sure. you know, there's no Pelucanoses that are kind of weak in the control matchup. Yeah, this uh, is a no changes if I've ever seen one. That sounds great to me. Yeah, I can see the Running Volleys, though. It depends on how scared Matt is of Proctor. All right, well, as these players are shuffling up here for game number two, I'd like to take this moment to say thank you to our sponsors. Ultimate Guard is the top of the line when it comes to TCG supplies, from the Katana sleeves, the highest quality sleeves on the market, to the Archive deck box that's large enough to hold your cubes and your commander decks. Check out Ultimate Guard products at your local game store. Uh, also, Moxfield.com. Moxfield is a great website for building decks and sharing them on social media uh, or with your friends through discords or other channels. Uh, Moxfield uh, has recently sponsored my channel as well, and I've been really digging using it on my stream for the last couple days. Also, thanks to Wings Etc. for Grill and Pub for keeping us nice and fed and happy on these long tournament weekends. We went there last night, and we're likely going to go back in a few hours. Back to the game at hand. We're going to start off here with Bolonic on the play, and here's Castle Vantress. We're going to pass back. Neither player mulganing. Turn one, Elf for Como. Yeah, that's what you want to be doing. Always be Elfin on turn one. A-B-E. Always be Elfin. Yes, the Abe Simpson paradigm. All right. Mistgate Pathway. I believe that's the white version. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Blue white pathway on white. Go back to Como's way. We got uh, Kior on turn two potentially. Looks like we're going to start with Old Growth Troll instead. It's going to play around a Dovin's Veto, but also potentially just apply some pressure here. And if Bolonic doesn't have a way to exile it quickly, this could get out of hand. Bolonic's land number three is Thespian Stage, and we're going to pass it back. So. Matt Como going to get aggressive here with this old growth troll. We'll see if he wants to continue that pressure or play out something like Kiora this turn. Here's an attack for four. That's the whale, the adventure whale. This is going to bounce the old growth troll back to hand. Uh, I don't know the full name of the whale. If it's like Horned Lock Whale Horned or Lock Lagoon whale. Breach. Goes on top or bottom of the library. This is like Azor it's an Azori strike. Oh, my God. So good. Does it have to be attacking or blocking? Or is it just target? Attacking creature you don't control. Wow, card's great. Okay. Well, here's Cure and an Elf. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. I made that joke earlier today. And it didn't get a laugh? Yeah. yeah because you're Unbelievable. not Unbelievable. Cool <laughs> Here is a Lotus Field and a copy off Thespian Stage. So now next turn, Bolonic has Farewell active and other things like that. But we're going to start with Cavalier of Thorns here. Bomat going to draw a card off of the Cure and go digging for a land. Looking for Nykthos to start juicing those turns. Finds it. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. That's a car carplusion. Yeah, this is a much better start for Blonic. He's not under as much pressure, has his mana engine online, still behind on the battlefield, but it's going to have time and the ability to do some powerful things to catch back up. All right, Matt has a land that he can play for turn and a cure untapped. So he has the ability to do some shenanigans this turn. We're going to untap a forest, play pathway on... 
green, and then we're going to draw a card off of that and then flip that around. Lotus okay. Field untapping with six mana. Let's see if we can do something bad. Ah. And by bad, I mean good. Yeah. Normally, you'd want to start here with a Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Then you can untap both Lotus Fields, effectively net a mana. Well, looks like that's what he's looking for. I think a Farewell would be a pretty good cast here as well if he had it, but I don't guess he does. We're going to draw a card. The whale having flash is pretty great. Once you get into the spot where you're like Teferi took up, like not only do you get that uh, initial burst of interaction from the adventure side, but then you just have a giant creature to play uh, following that. Yeah, could flash it in on his turn, so it'll enter untapped. If you flash it down on your opponent's turn, it enters tapped. That'll be a good blocker for the Teferi. Yeah. Said uh... decides to hold up something oh, else, yeah. uh, specifically that Dovin's veto. I think. Yeah, I definitely see a veto. Sure, what the other cards in hand are. Uh, thought I saw a Narset part of Ails, I think. Um, one of them is the uh, Seagate Restoration, but it's turned around backwards, but I'm not 100%. Here comes a big attack, all going at Teferi. What you got? Any blockers? I would recommend doing something. This is a spot where something like Ether Spouts or Settle the Wreckage would be really nice, but uh, nothing there, and Teferi goes down, not swinging. Huh. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Wolf of Haven. We have another big creature we can play and draw a card. Ooh, looks like we're going for a Karn, but that one's going to meet its demise via Doven's Veto. Yeah. We have four mana floating. Blue, blue, white, white, and pool. You can veto that. Maybe a memory deluge to follow up. Okay, here's Elf, and there it is. Memory deluge, good call. So, looking at the top four cards of the deck, because that's how much we spent on the front half. I believe that was a Narset reversal? There are two in the sideboard. That card is crazy against... Uh... Storming the festival, holy. Let you get your Teferis out of the deck and put them in play for free. <laughs> and I'll say it. Wandering Emperor. The world's Proctor. biggest remand. Uh, pretty narrow card in this matchup. There, there's not many instants or sorceries in the Mono Green Devotion deck. Yeah, but Storm the Festival is the nuts. And uh, they're going to cast it every time they draw it. Good against the flashback, too. And it, oh, yeah. Because it will stay exiled. exiled. Yep. Does take the Narcess reversal. That's in the hand now. Finds a Ganjo. So, pretty well set up defensively. Still at 20 life. Still looking for a farewell or something to clear off these big baddies in play. I'm going to start by tapping six. Oh, that is a farewell. Okay, so the modes are going to be exile creatures, graveyards, enchantments. No artifacts to speak of. Leaves the graveyard, so just creatures yeah. and enchantments gone. No, nothing in Matt's graveyard. He has a memory deluge. He doesn't want to exile, so mm -hmm. don't touch those. All right, now Matt does have access to six mana with the cure if he wants to go for a storm the festival. We're gonna go old growth troll. Now is Karn Kiora left over? Uh, Belonic's still on twenty life here. Yeah, Mono Green doesn't win that often by just jamming in with creatures, but uh, and th this is the type of matchup where like a turn two old growth troll can occasionally go the distance. That's what we saw in game number one, but. Balonic with that early Teferi here of Dominaria forced a big attack at it, and now uh, Matt's got an uphill battle. Yeah, definitely uphill. Uh, really just sort of needs Balonic not to find gas, but with the memory deluge in the graveyard and eight mana up, I think uh, those hopes are not going to be uh, well founded. All right, here's another Karn the Great Creator. Let's see if Balonic has a counterspell. Nope. Karn comes in. Yeah, so it says Poopy Narset's Reversal. <laughs> All right, Karn. Matt's going to take a look at his sideboard here. He's going to figure out exactly what he wants to go digging for. Four Mods Crypt doesn't seem great because the uh, Deluge is going to get flashed back immediately. I'm going to go for Damping Sphere. That's going to ruin Balonic's life. Those Lotus Fields are going to be frozen, turned into colorless lands. Yeah. Not really a lot of ways to answer this outside of Farewell that just got cast. And 
It's re it's not just cutting you down from six mana to two mana. It's also the fact that they tap for colorless. Right. So now your colors are a little wonky. There's only one white source on the battlefield. So Supreme Verdict is cut off. All right, here we go. Back Balonic's way. Gets the Hornlock Well in play. And now we can use that to pressure the Planeswalkers. Or Matt can maybe block. Yeah, I imagine if he left the 4-4 back, it's blocking. Because you want to get another Karn activation, you can maybe find Cityscape Leveler. Right. Which you can cast because of Kiora untapping the Havened land. Yeah, it's weird. While uh, Wolf Willow Haven... This is a weird interaction. So Wolf Willow Haven with Damping Sphere still works. But I believe Old Growth Troll does not. And the reason is that Wolf Willow Haven says whenever the land becomes tapped, the Wolf Willow Haven adds the green. Whereas yes. the Old Growth Troll adds the ability to the land itself. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Como here. Mono GR Devotion? Are you kidding me? Just say GR Devotion, brother. <laughs> mono GR Devotion? It's not mono green anymore. That's all. <laughs> I just saw the deck name. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Taryn. Thank I'm you. I'm not Thank sorry you. at all. Okay, goes back into the sideboard, does a mat. Yeah, the Cityscape Leveler seems pretty sweet here. Now, Matt can only make exactly eight here. Eight mana, nine with a land drop. Oh, there's three lands there. Yeah, nine with a land drop. And the Whale has a ward two. So even with the land, he can't wish... For Cityscape Leveler and blow up the Whale with it. Ward will counter that trigger. But he might just start, you know. He might not know that the Whale has a uh, Ward. We had this problem earlier. Maybe he just wants to cast 8-8 eight eight, though, you know. Yeah, it's still really big. It'll draw a card. Oh, it looks like Balonic doesn't know about the ward either. Oh, well, I think mm, good guy Matt reminded him about it because uh, mostly it's just I want to get this thing down and draw a card. And uh, it is a trigger from the ward, so I think Gabriel could have missed it, but Matt just says it has ward. Now we're going to go back Balonic's way. The Damage Sphere is messing with the Lotus Fields and the Old Growth Troll land, so he wasn't able to pay the two for the... Is it Hornlock Wells? Am I saying that right? Yes. Okay. Here's Impulse. Digging for an answer to the Damping Spheres, more than likely. I think he picked up another Farewell. Farewell. A little awkward, because you'd have to exile your own Whale, but getting the Cityscape Leveler out of here without uh, allowing for Unearth is nice. We did find a second Sparrow's Headquarters. We have double white for a potential farewell as well. All right, just passes the turn. That 8-8 a little too hard for him to get through here. Let's see if he goes for the attack plus pay two. That will give Balonic a uh, Power Stone token, but it's going to be difficult for him to use it, not only because of the Karn, but also uh, you can only use it on activated abilities and, uh, I don't know, artifacts. Attack for eight. Balonic going to go down to 12. And you know, still looking at that poopy Narset's reversal. Look, I'm telling you, man, if it gets to be cast on the Storm of the Festival, it's going to be good. It's going to look at the top five, and it's like nothing comes in, actually, <laughs> more than likely. But... All right, another land here for Como. Let's see if he has any follow-ups to the Cityscape level or this in play. We're going to take a damage off of the Carplusion Force, it looks like. We're going to go for a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Any counter spells? No, it resolves. So now it's basically farewell or bust. And I'm not even sure that Balonic has access to two white mana. I think those are two Spars headquarters. But here is Wandering Emperor. That's going to come down and likely exile the Cityscape Leveler. And I think Balonic could have done this in combat, but was afraid of the Storm of the Festival and chose not to to hold up that Narset's reversal. With farewell in hand, could just say, okay, that's fine. I'll tick up the... Uh, 
the Wanderer and then untap and play Farewell and then make a 2-2. Two -two. Plenty of good options still. Mostly just doesn't want to put the shields down. Our sense reversal at the ready at all times. No. When you have a counter spell that's that narrow, you just can't afford to give your opponent the window and then have it be dead. I like that he can play the farewell here, and that unlocks both of the lotus fields, so he can use them post combat to do more degenerate stuff. Yeah. So let's hit uh, creatures, artifacts, enchantments. Yep. And uh, there's nothing in the graveyard that matters for either player. It looks like Matt is thinking about sacking the land with the old growth troll so it makes a 4 4 so he can draw a card off the Kiora. Uh, you effectively turn the forest into a card. Right. Because the, the creature itself was, will get exiled. The old growth troll is currently an aura, so it's going to get exiled to Farewell if you don't sacrifice it. Mm -hmm. So do you want a forest or a random card? Well, it looks I, like he wants a forest. Has plans for that mana next yeah. turn. Yeah. He must. All these get exiled. We're going to go back Como's way. We can activate the Karn and the Cure here. So let's see what we can cobble together. I see an old growth troll drawn. Not That's sure what else start. is in the hand. We're going to start by cashing in the Karn. And we're going to go get the Cityscape Leveler back from exile. And we have enough with the Cure untapped to actually allow us to play Seascape Leveler and blow up the Wandering Emperor. That's a nice one. We'll draw a card off Kiora, too. Yep. And you get a Power Stone token. I'll draw a card. <laughs> and that's why he kept the Force around. He didn't have eight without it. And nice planning there from Como. I'm going to go back to Way and see if he has another way to deal with the Cityscape Leveler. That was a strict Proctor drawn, I believe. Yeah, a little late for that one. We do have a boatload of mana at our disposal now. And there's the flashback deluge. So I think I see two Teferis, another Narset's reversal. There's a Dovin's Veto. I think the Veto should about lock it up. Which is weird, considering he's got a big creature on the other side of the table, but he already has the answer for it. Well, you, you gotta, yeah. You gotta answer the leveler. The Teferi, I guess, can do that? Yeah. That will leave him vulnerable to Storm the Festival for a turn if he taps out for it, but it's either that or let Cityscape Leveler ruin your life. Here's Teferi. Let's get Teferi, uh, Hero of Dominaria, on the table. Oh, we went for the untap effect. Nice. Okay, so we're going to get to untap both Lotus Fields. Let's see if we have anything on the inside of this tricky. No, but we do have discontinuity. And that is going to end Matt's turn on his upkeep, effectively a time walk. Yeah, and that is the nail in the coffin, I think, for this game. All right, going to draw another card with Teferi. We're looking for an answer for that Cityscape Leveler still. Tap six. We have another discontinuity in hand. We're going to float two and play a deluge. Look at the top four. Put two in hand. This one's all over except the crying. We'll see if Matt wants to tap the mat after this next discontinuity. I assume he's not going to concede until Cityscape Leveler is off the battlefield. At some point, if he's ever able to attack, that we'll be able to knock off the Teferi. Uh, even if that happens, Balanic has a backup Teferi in hand. Yeah, and here's another Lotus Field. That ability is countered by the Strict Proctor, so he doesn't have to sack lands. So that's the nice one-two punch. Here's Impulse. We're still looking. Let's, uh, let's get that Hall of Storm Giants, eh? Start attacking. 7-7 seven, seven versus 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> All right, we're going to put some on the bottom. Is that another discontinuity? I don't know. All right, we're going to untap two Lotus Fields and then say go. And on your on your upkeep, you're going to discontinuity again. Time walk. And Matt's like, sure. I'll take no game actions. Love it. I like how Blonix playing this. Whenever I see people play Lotus Field uh, control, I often see them wait for their opponent to draw, cast a spell, make an attack. They they like to wait and use discontinuity as like a counter spell on top of time walk. But the better players will do something like attack before making any other plays so that you're forced to discontinuity in that spot. Yeah. Um, and I think Matt would definitely say, okay, declare attacks after drawing if he sees six man up from Balonic. 
There's another flashback deluge. And uh, now has another Dovin's Veto in hand. I think it's just going to be a matter of time before we ultimate this Teferi. And start drawing more cards with the other Teferi. And exile all of Matt's permanents. Alright, well, we're still going. Here's Balonic. Matt's not going to give up until the Cityscape Leveler is gone. Here's another Deluge. And we still have untaps from the Teferi. believe that's second sunrise not second sunrise uh approach of the second sun is that in the list that's what it looks so. like it was like a orange it was a white card with like a big orange sun on it i think that's the one on do inversion Ooh, that's the card i don't get to see too much that's the dual-sided wrath effect right this yeah. land on the back side Destroy that one doesn't land permanence that one doesn't see a ton of play uh because it costs eight on the front side even though the land on the back side is still quite good but Lotus Field is a deck that can easily take advantage of something that is both a land and an eight mana card. Yeah, just a singleton in the deck. A good one to dig for with your deluges to get you out of some tight spots. And if you draw it early, play it as a land. Okay, Balonic here, essentially infinite mana. Just kind of going through the motions. Has everything kind of locked up. We're going to bounce Cityscape Leveler. Going to attack for yeah, three. It's beat down a clock. And then we'll go to instep and untap two Lotus Fields. And then on upkeep, we can discontinuity. Or we can wait until Matt goes to cast the Seascape Leveler. All right, here it is. Target your thing. Any responses? No, it just happens. Interesting. I was positive he had another discontinuity after bouncing it. But maybe just didn't have a way to deal with the Leveler and... Decided, you know what? It's okay if my Teferi dies. We're far enough ahead. And here's a big Deluge on the instep. We're using all of our mana every turn, too, which is wild. <laughs> well, there's plenty of expensive cards in the Lotus Field deck. Finds a Farewell and another Discontinuity. So we have the ability to exile artifacts and then Discontinuity on Matt's upkeep. As well as, I don't know, 10 more mana to do stuff with, something like that. Jeez. Yeah, we could do whatever we want. Oh, yeah. Infinity mana. White Claw time for Balonic. No laws. <laughs> Do whatever. All right. Artifacts exiled. Three point attack going to come across at least. Another Strict Proctor. Two Narsets for Russell's in hand, continuing to do nothing. Or is that more discontinuities? I know there's one discontinuity, and I think there's two, maybe three Narset traversals. I think there's only two, though. Fable the Mirror Breaker. That one's not going to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. I don't think life totals were right, but could be wrong. We're going to go for an Ether Gust, I believe, and then Koma's going to put that on bottom. A little Growth Troll. That's a cool looking ether gust. Oh. Interesting that we used the gust instead of one of the two Dovin's vetoes. Now we're a little cold to the old growth roll. Or we just Yeah, okay. I'll End your turn. <laughs> All right. Blonic takes game number two. We got about twenty minutes to finish game number three, but I know Bomat's probably not gonna be sideboarding anything. Definitely needs to get the Karn uh cards out of the deck back to the sideboard. We got game number three coming up. Yeah, and uh, Matt back on the play where he wants to be as the Land of War Elves Elvish Mystic deck. Uh, really just going to come down to how quickly Balonic can establish that Lotus Field mana engine. Right. You know, when you have turn two Proctor into turn three Lotus Field, and then you have six mana on turn four, everything is easy. Mm -hmm. But when you have to turn two Impulse, and then maybe Lotus Field without the Proctor, and you're not really ahead on lands uh, yet, ahead on mana until turn six or seven. You know, the mono green deck can punish you and put you too far behind to catch up. All right, as these players are shoveling up here for game number three, I'd like to say a big thank you to TCGplayer.com for being our marquee sponsor here on the Apex Invitational Series. Uh, you can check out TCGplayer.com for all of your singles uh, needs, whether it's Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon, or now Disney's Lorcana. TCG Player's got you covered. 
Uh, if you're a store looking to sell some cards online, what better place than the marketplace? TCG Players Marketplace is your one-stop shop for buying and selling all of your collectible cards. You can also check out their sister site, TCG Player Infinite, which uh, is a place where they post uh, competitive articles by big names like uh, Frank Carson and others. I've been posted on there twice, but it's been a minute, and it was about Lorcan and we're doing magic. But I only said that because our director goes, and Tandy, y'all can't hear him because he mutes himself. All right, Ross, you got anything for me? No, just looking over deck lists, making sure I know what's what. Them Narset's reversals, huh? Just chilling, doing nothing? They didn't do a whole lot. Didn't do a whole lot. But you know what? Maybe this is the game where they do things. Maybe. We'll see. But Matt going to be on the play with Green Devotion. We're splashing red for Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It looked great in game one. It's got uh, discontinuity in game two, though. <laughs> see ya. All right. Here we go. Let's see if either player wants to take a mulligan or if they're both happy with their seven. Como looks at a hand with no green sources and two Nyctos, and we're going to go to six, looking for a better one. A very common play pattern from Green Devotion is to mulligan hands without elf, but also just to mulligan weaker hands in general. You're a linear strategy with a high payoff, and uh, you just want to make sure that your starts are pretty good to pressure your opponent. Especially now with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, you can have some pretty okay openers as long as you have Elf Fable. It's like everything else is whatever. Yeah, both of these decks can mulligan pretty aggressively. Mm -hmm. Just looking to get, again, you know, both of them have this very powerful mana engine that if they get online, they'll undo the card advantage pretty quickly with a lot of powerful plays, whether that's, you know, Teferi drawing a card every turn and untapping Lotus Fields or Nykthos making a bunch of mana and casting Storm the Festivals and Kiora drawing cards and the like. All right, turn one Elf. We're going to go back. Balonic has no turn one play, just to tap Spar's headquarters. Matt Shocks on turn number two. He's down to 16. We're going to play Wolf Willow Haven on a stopping ground into another Elf. Here we go. All right, so this is set up for a potential turn three Storm of the Festival. Maybe a Cavalier of Thorns. And Hingegate Pathway means that we can't play Narset's Reversal, but we can play Dovin's Veto if all four of those are in the deck. We might have one here. Here it comes. Cavalier of Thorns. And an Aether Gust from Balonic, and we quickly put it back on top. And we say go instead of attacking for one. Yeah, maybe a little fast there from uh, Bowmat, but uh, got to feel like he doesn't really have a lot of gas if he so quickly put the Cavalier on top. But. All right, well, Matt shortcutting here, going to play. <laughs> okay, I don't understand what's happening. He's just, like, not attacking. Is he afraid of getting his creatures killed from being tapped or something? I don't know. Maybe Wandering Emperor? But he's already got one elf tapped, right? Well, he missed two points there. Playing a little sloppy. I'll give him a pep talk after this round. Could have been three points. He had five mana from lands that next turn. Even shocked with that stomping ground. All right. This time the Cavalier resolves after getting gusted twice. Top five reveals a pathway. It's forced to come in on red. And I think Matt does know that. And we're finally going to attack for two. Missed a couple points, but now we're back in the driver's seat. Let's see if Balonic has anything to challenge. We do have Lotus Field from last turn. Up to five mana now. It wasn't a cheaty Lotus Field, though. It was a, a retail. Yeah, this time Balonic not getting his mana engine online super quickly, but had a lot of disruption. Both copies of Ether Gust from the sideboard. Okay, we're going to minus on the Cavalier, but that does leave the Teferi vulnerable now. Draw for turn. Didn't get a good look at it. Got to feel like there's a second Teferi coming, and you just get the Cavalier out of the way, and then the second one gets to survive. Here's calling the Great Creator. What a pickup with the shields down. We're going to go get Damping Sphere, and we're going to shut off Lotus Field. Balonic on the back foot. Let's see if he can come back. Yeah, now down to three mana, essentially. All right, here's an impulse. We're going to look at the top four, put one in our hand. The rest go on the bottom. There's a farewell. That one is pretty far away from being cast, but uh, might be his only option, especially if he's going to hit the next couple land drops. He's going to play his fourth land this turn. I hope we see this damping sphere get animated to for lethal. <laughs> that would be something. Did you get a good look at the card he took? Nope. Yeah, me neither. 
Okay. I'm gonna shock with Seagate Restoration, taking three damage down to twelve. I guess that means we have uh, Dovin's Veto or Narset's Reversal in hand to protect ourselves. Let's see if Bomat can sniff it out. This whole sideboard at his disposal here with Karn the Great Creator. We are playing all artifacts in the board. Could get Cityscape Leveler here. Has 8 mana to cast it. That would get around the Dovin's Veto. And then Animating Damping Sphere would be a 12-point attack next turn. So we're going to tap 3. We're going to start with Kiora. And that gets vetoed. And now, shields are down. We're going to go minus in the Karn. And we're playing a little bit faster now. What are we going to go get? Well, Matt finds the Stone Brain. This one is going to get cast for 3. And then we're going to activate it. And we're going to say... Farewell to your farewells. They are being removed. Well, the stone brain should be exiled to its own ability. And note that Matt did pay three for that because of his own damping sphere. Yeah. Had already played Kiora that turn, so uh, needed every little bit of mana in order to resolve this stone brain. All right. Mr. Director, do you mind going and poking him about the stone brain, please? Thank you. Yeah, it's actually better for him yeah. getting it into the exile zone because now it is retrievable with future Karn activations. Right, that's one of the reasons why it's so strong in the Karn the Great Creator decks is because it's not a one-shot use. And while there are some decks where you want to take the uh, Stone Brain early to take away one of their key elements, uh, there are other matchups where taking away one of those things doesn't end the game necessarily. I'm going to go back Balonic's way. There's a damage here locking down the Lotus Field. Let's see if he has... A way out. We know farewells are gone. We're going to start with Impulse. Yeah, I don't know how many other ways he has Blonic to even take it off the battlefield. Just the one Ottawa and the mana base? Yeah, really relying on farewell. And, or and just... to fairies. Yeah. Okay. Keeps a card. Alright, that costs one more from the Damping Sphere. We need to go stop that, please. Yeah, had Impulse into Proctor, but Proctor costs three. Yeah, the damage sphere making it cost one extra means that we actually can't play it with the Lotus Field. So we're probably going to have to do a big rewind here. Yeah. Melonic trying to back up already. You know, we can't yeah. do that. Let's yeah. get a judge. Let's get it fixed the right way. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Director. So as uh, the head judge comes over and uh, discusses the infraction, uh, what essentially happened was the Strict Proctor was played for two mana when it were required three mana because of the Damping Sphere as the second spell. A Lotus Field was played, which was countered by the Proctor, but since the Proctor wasn't supposed to be there, my guess is we're going to do a full rewind, uh, Lotus Field back to hand, Proctor back to hand, untap the two lands that was used to cast it, and then we'll have Bolonic make a different uh, sequence after that. So uh, we do have our uh, head judge, Garrison Fote, over to check in with these players, and we're going to get that fixed in just a second. Yeah, this should be a pretty easy backup. No critical decisions were made. And, uh, this is an interesting game. Bomat's done a very good job of disrupting Bolonic, but doesn't have much of a clock here. You know, just a couple elves on the battlefield could oh, make a... Oh, he's got a clock. <laughs> Plus on the damping sphere. <laughs> could make a wolf with the wolf flow haven, but really needs to find something like a Cavalier of Thorns or an old growth troll, uh, you know, to, to be in business. And looking at the list, one of the things that uh, you have to give up in aiding this red splash is utility lands. No copies of Lair of the Hydra that you normally see in Green Devotion decks. Yeah, that he actually another... doesn't have Besage you either, which, you know, he was showing me the land base, and uh, we were talking like half an hour before the event started, and the lack of Lair and the lack of Besage you is a concession to the red splash and to maintain a healthy number of forests for Old Growth Troll to attach to. Yep. Now, I posited, should we be cutting Old Growth Troll from the deck if we're going to splash red for Fable so that we can still play Lair and Besage you, and maybe something uh, that's large and triple green and can play go in that Blue spot. instead, I guess. Go back to Jade Light Ranger, maybe? That would actually be really good with Fable, too. Let's play Blue Kronos. Just play Blue Kronos. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. It's legendary. It's also good. It's not better than Old Growth Troll. I know. you got to play Old Growth Troll. Troll is sort of a, a undersung hero of this deck, having that early source of devotion that is so difficult to interact right. with. Right. It actually single-handedly makes people play Exile Removal in the format. Yeah. 
You used to see a lot more obliterating bolts around, but then shielded was printed. <laughs> and yeah. the red decks just wow. weren't allowed to play four damage spells. Well, more than that is they're not really even allowed to play Roast to deal with Shieldred because Old Growth Troll yeah. punishes it so badly. All right, well, here is Cavalier of Thorns. This is going to let Matt Como uh, look at the top five and get a land, and it puts a Storm of the Festival into the graveyard, and we're getting close to being able to cast that. But if there's a Narset's Reversal from Blonic, that could be a great way for him to get out of this. Now Como has decided, do I plus on the damping sphere and start attacking or not? And he says no. Now, you don't want to do that before it's lethal and then lose it to a sweeper. All right, Wandering Emperor is the pickup, I believe, from Balonic, so we can maybe use that to eat the Cavalier of Thorns. That would be good, but I don't. I still don't see where is Balonic going to completely turn this game around. Everything he's doing is just treading water, treading water, and without those farewells, I, I don't see it ever improving from that spot. Yeah, I'm kind of on board with you, but I think really where it starts is getting extremely lucky with Narset Reversal. That's like the thing that's going to potentially get like a Teferi on the battlefield that can maybe minus on the Damping Sphere and go from there. Uh, at this point, uh, Matt is kind of in a weird spot where he wants to pressure but doesn't want uh, to open the door any for Balonic. So he's going to attack for five with just the Cavalier of Thorns. We're going to get cure down yeah untap the cavalier play a little defense all right blonic down to five don't have lethal in play just yet but getting pretty close the proctor likely gonna have to block next turn well now if you're matt let's say let's say blonic passes with five or six mana up do you even attack with Cavalier of Thorns for fear of them having uh, a Wandering Emperor to eat your thing? Good question. It does. You do want to be aggressive. You want to close this game out, but... All right, well, here's Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. This one costs five. We played the Lotus Field, and the trigger was countered because of the Strict Proctor. Those Lotus Fields are tapping for one colorless each. We're going to minus on Karn the Great Creator. Okay. Interesting. So with Balonic at exactly five, we got you to send one elf at the Teferi and both other creatures at face. You got to yep. chump the, the Cavaliers. You got a point through. Yeah, good call. I like that attack. See yeah. if Matt figures it out. Do we have access to the damage here in the graveyard now? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I believe we do. And the shields are down, so no Narset's Reversal possible. And here comes Storm the Festival. And we know Karn the Great Crater is a guaranteed hit if he wants it. Top five. Cavalier in the mix. Nikto shut down by his own Damping Sphere, but that's okay. We're going to go a 5-6 and a Karn the Great Creator. Balonic without farewell in his deck thanks to Stone Brain, and I cannot imagine that this is going right. to... Cavalier trigger gets countered by the Proctor, but... I think I it don't... counters the Cure trigger as well, right? Yeah, it should. Sheesh. I want a plus on the damping sphere now, personally, but I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, so Balonic force block here. Proctor going to go into the Cavalier. Maybe we should have attacked first before doing the Storm of the Festival. This is a pretty big misstep from Matt Como. Let's hope it doesn't bite him. Yeah, I definitely wanted to attack first. All right, Karn can still be activated here. Let's see if he wants to minus or plus. We're going to go get maybe Cityscape Leveler or some other big baddie to cast next turn. Could go get the Stone Brain from Exile, and does. It's going to go to hand. Just going to start stoning those brains. Uh, I see another Sparrow's Headquarters. It looks like another Strict Proctor. Yeah, nothing going for Balonic there. All right, and Matt Como wins game number three in the match, and he's going to move to 1-0 in our last chance qualifier here, playing Mono Green Devotion, Splashing Red for Fable the Mirror Breaker. Uh, decent showing for the card fable in game number one. Looked pretty nice. Uh, I believe it got countered one time in another game, but other than that, you know, it's a it's a neat little splash, and I'm curious to see how it does. Yeah, it looked good in game one. We didn't really see it in the post-sideboard games, but I'm sure we'll see a little bit more of it today. Matt, off to a good start. We'll probably get him on camera once or twice more. Yeah.